Good morning. It's a pleasure to welcome you all today to the Sunday service where we have a guest speaker, uh, Reverend Eric Harris. To introduce Reverend Harris, Reverend House was born and raised on a farm in southeastern Ontario. He graduated with Masters of Divinity from Waterloo Lutheran Seminary. After graduation, he was ordained a priest in the Anglican Church of Canada. He served as Anglican chaplain at Queen's University in Kingston for four years and as rector in St. Thomas Anglican Church in Hamilton for nine years. For the past 22 years, he was the manager of the spiritual and religious care department at the Scarborough Hospital. Derek is married to Anne, who is a United Church of Canada minister in Scarborough. They have adopted two children, a son, Benjamin, and a daughter, Rebecca. Rebecca's genetic background is black and white. Benjamin's genetic background is Sri Lankan and Philippine. They have a cat named Sammy and a dog named Beethoven. I invite Reverend Terry Cuss to give his talk on multi-faith hospital chaplaincy within a diverse community. Reverend Cuss. Retired April 2012, so uh, 
In fact, that's not quite accurate. The, um, I have some notes that I go along with just so that there's some speaking points to the slides. The Scarborough Hospital is uh, made up of two hospitals, both founded by religious communities, Christian communities. The one is now called the uh, Birchmount Campus, which was founded by, that's the top one, which was founded by the Salvation Army and was originally called the Grace Hospital. The bottom picture is um, of the general campus and it was founded by the Sisters of Misericord, which is a religious uh, Roman Catholic order of sisters. So Christianity is embedded in both of those organizations and um, you would see that in the worship center and sometimes throughout the building. Every organization has its uh, mission, vision, and values and um, the hospital tries to, as best it can, fulfill these, uh, these missions the mission, vision, and values. And the implication behind the, the mission, vision, values is to offer sensitive care to what's called our global community. And people from all over the world reside in Scarborough, and you can imagine the challenge it is to offer care to that global community. Um, we wrestled as a bartender is a member of the Spiritual Religious Care Committee, which is an advisory committee to the Spiritual Care Department. And he knows that we wrestled with trying to get our um, food services people to provide vegetarian meals for our Hindu patients. And you think that was easy, it's not. Uh, halal meals for our Muslim patients. Um, many of our Newer immigrants are very modest. They come from Asian cultures, and um, modesty is an important value. If you've ever been in a hospital, you might have worn one of those gowns, which uh, are not very modest. So we're trying to find gowns that are longer and clothes at the back. Um, how to integrate um, alternative medicines with Western medicine. Our doctors and nurses are always trying to work with the types of medications that people may be treating themselves with and will those medications interfere with Western medicine. Um, being sensitive to how different cultures understand death and dying. Who do you tell um, that a person is dying, a family member is dying? Different cultures, you might not speak that to the person themselves. Although Canadian law says that uh, the patient is at the center of the care and needs to be informed. Some cultures you're not supposed to tell the patient. You're supposed to tell the family member. So you can imagine some of the conflicts around that. Um, understanding of mental illness. Different cultures have different sensitivities around that. Different religious traditions, different festivals, how do we accommodate those in this hospital where there is such a great variety of cultures? So you can see, and then we have about 3,000 staff. How do you educate 3,000 staff who themselves come from a variety of cultures and religions and spiritualities as they care for people from other cultures and religions and spiritualities? You can see the um, potential for some very difficult communication problems and issues. So we wrestle with that. <clears throat> Just some um, um, statistics. I, um, this, I should say that this slide presentation is, was created by my friend Ajit Varghese, who is very technologically sophisticated. I can barely do the switch thing. Actually, I'm quite proud of the fact that I learned that my mouse can uh, change the slides from a distance. So uh, he tells me that, in fact, the white uh, population in Scarborough has, uh, these are old uh, statistics, 
um, are actually a quarter now. And if you travel through Scarborough, you would notice that the population has changed. That gives you a quick uh, understanding of the variety of um, ethnic, cultural, and linguistic backgrounds. The religion in Scarborough, once again, um, apparently these statistics are, I think, from 2001. And um, as it tells me that uh, an update would indicate that there is a larger no religion affiliation and apparently the Muslim community is growing faster than any other uh, religious community in uh, Scarborough and perhaps throughout the GTA. These are just some quick statistics about the number of beds in the hospital and the emergency visits and so on to give you a quick sense of the uh, hospital and the work that they do. Uh, once again, this, uh, this slide is outdated because um, I retired in April. The lady next to me, Barbara Champ, who was the director of the department, uh, she retired in June, I think it was, and there, are, uh, there have been two new Salvation Army's, Army officers um, appointed. Uh, just to give you this chap here, Ajit Bardis, is the chap who did all these fine PowerPoint slides, and um, he is a technical expert. Um, so myself and Barbara have retired, and there are um, new new people appointed in our place. <clears throat> in our attempt to communicate with and understand the different cultures and uh, languages. Uh, the hospital hired a couple of chaplains, Ajit Bardis, my good friend and colleague. He, can, he is from Kerala, India, and speaks Malayalam. It took me almost a year to say Malayalam, <laughs> if you pronounce it. And, but he also, apparently Malayalam is very close to Tamil. And I gather they can understand each other, Tamils and people who speak Malayalam. So um, he has been uh, very helpful with our Tamil community. Uh, one of the larger Tamil communities is in Scarborough in the GTA. Apparently, uh, the next largest communi Tamil community outside of Sri Lanka is, well, except for India, Tamil Nadu, uh, is in GTA, a large Tamil population. So um, he is uh, uh, very important in our ministry of the town. Uh, Scarlett, uh, she can speak both, she's from Hong Kong, and can speak both Cantonese and Mandarin. And the next, there are two large communities, uh, linguistic communities, cultural communities. Um, one is the Tamil community, the other is the uh, Chinese community. And uh, the signs at the hospital are in English, Tamil, and also in uh, um, Chinese. This is sort of how, you know, different um, religions have different symbols, like the Hindus have Om, Christians have the cross, Muslims the crescent. Um, <clears throat> for our department, the golden rule poster became our symbol, if you want. The golden rule, as you know, is uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And uh, my good friend Paul McKenna, who is at the Scarborough Missions, put together that poster and he found in the different religions something that's similar, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Um, I can't quite read what... For Hinduism, this is the sum of duty do not do to others what you would cause pain to be done to, uh, uh, to you. And I can't read the text that comes from. Do you happen to know that text? Uh -huh. Okay. I think that Is it? Okay. I think. And for each of the different traditions. So that, uh, and I do have a poster that I will give Swamiji, and um, he can either keep it in his office or post it someplace your, uh, in your uh, organization. And uh, if you're interested in following up, there's a whole study series. You go Google uh, Scarborough Mission and they will, uh, they will give you a way to
they've studied the different religions and how they interact and, and that sort of thing. So that's, um, that's an important <coughs> um, picture, poster for our department. So just a symbol of caring hands, uh, the story that was read uh, today, um, I suppose would be illustrated by this picture of caring hands. The worship center at the Scarborough Hospital was, um, was created by the, uh, the nuns, the Roman Catholic nuns. So our first worship center would have crosses in the floor, crosses on the pews. Um, it had stained glass windows and there were Christian symbols in the stained glass windows. And that represented Scarborough back in 1956 when the hospital was created. That worship center, chapel as it was called, uh, does not represent Scarborough now. When the new wing was built in the hospital, we were given an opportunity to move to the main floor. And so the question became, how will we design a worship center that would accommodate the many people, or the many peoples that you saw represented in the Golden Rule poster? And we wrestled with, I guess, two concepts. One is, would we try to have all the symbols of the different religions, or would we go with more abstract art, say, so that, um, because my friend Paul McKenna, the chap who created the uh, multi-faith poster, says there are, I don't know, 350 religions in the world or something like that. Well, I don't even know what some of the symbols would be for them. So we decided that we would go with more abstract. And so you see in the doorpost, um, you can see whatever you want to see in abstract. The banner at the front of the worship center is a scene. And once again, I, I'm interested to see the scene you have here. Um, I suppose at some level we were trying to recreate something like that in our worship center. So rather than hanging up symbols or, or things that could be uh, seen by other religions as offensive, we decided to create banners that had, uh, for me at least, this is what they symbolize, that banner on the right, on the left, symbolizes spring. I don't know what you see in it. Uh, the banner on the right symbolizes fall, so we hang it up in the fall in the worship center. The one on the left, it symbolizes summer for me. The one on the right symbolizes winter for me. You can interpret however you want to interpret it. Just see it maybe as a very nice fabric. Um, my wife, uh, members of her church, made those uh, those banners. And um, actually, I I like fabric. I like stained glass. So there we are. The window here in the worship center is once again abstract, uh, color, glass, and um, once again you can see in abstract whatever you wish to see. In the worship center we have uh, worship mats. Uh, the Muslims, as you know, pray five times a day, and so the, uh, that corner of the worship center is very well used um, for the Muslims to come pray, staff, uh, family members, not often patients because if you've been around hospitals you know that patients are very sick and um, they can't, basically they stay in their room, but they can of course say their prayers in the room. The other, um, and this is uh, this chap, Ajit, who's from Kerala, he is very sophisticated technologically, he was, he's a great gift, he's a wonderful person and also has a great gift in uh, PowerPoint and all sorts of things. We have a channel in the hospital that is our free channel. It's called the Religion Channel. And any patient in the hospital, there are televisions in all the rooms, any patient in the hospital can tune in to Channel 76, which is free. He created um, wonderful slides that have sayings and comfort pictures, you know, sort of encouragement, and there's music. Uh, and you can see that up in the corner, one of the, uh, there's some other pictures that will show that a little better. 
Then this kind, this is the poster outside. You can use the uh, worship center for prayer, meditation, quiet. Uh, we have a multi-faith worship. I'll say a little more about that. On the Wednesday, sometimes there's Sunday worship. There's prayer mats and Roman Catholic plus the sacrament, uh, a number of services. One of the things we, we wrestle with in our Wednesday worship is how do we create a worship service that would be appropriate for the different religions represented in the hospital. So we create a uh, multi-faith worship. And that would be, for example, we would take uh, passages from um, the Gita, the Ramayana, the Vedas, the uh, Quran, the uh, Christian scriptures, the, the, the Hebrew scriptures, um, we uh, native, there's uh, sayings in the, the native tradition. So we would, and of course, uh, Mr. Google is very helpful. Uh, and there are websites that have multi-faith uh, passages. So we create a multi-faith worship service that has different uh, passages on a theme. It might be love, it might be peace, it might be healing. And we would uh, try to follow through that theme with passages, prayers, uh, scripture from the different traditions. That's a bit of a challenge, actually, to do that. Um, especially uh, the person who's creating the worship comes from a particular tradition, and we understand that tradition, and we understand the context of that tradition and text. When you start going out and you know taking passages free from the Quran or from the Hindu scriptures, um, there's I'm not sure, but we have friends. That's why we we have. Nurture friends like Bartendu and uh, friends from the other traditions to help us. This is the people who come and sing in our Wednesday worship service. The hymns we sing are from the Christian tradition, although we sing hymns that are uh, appropriate, that speak about God, creation. Um, we try not to choose hymns that focus on Jesus, although that would be appropriate because there are Christians in the hospital. Um, but we try to be sensitive about the kinds of hymns we choose. Our, our choir can only sing Christian hymns. We, we don't know the mantras uh, and the other uh, tradition, from the other traditions. <clears throat> this is from the channel that I was talking, channel 76. Those are some of the slides that uh, Ajit put together with some of the comforting statements, some pictures, and there's background music. These are some uh, people who help us, and we're, we're quite pleased that they join us. Over here is uh, Yenjen Sik. She's a Buddhist nun, and uh, she's a center person to organize our Wisak festival. Uh, this is Muhammad. I guess we would say that he's a lay imam. He's not a trained imam, but a lay imam. And Darshanan is a Hindu pandit, a Hindu priest, and he's on call both Muhammad, well, these three, Yen Jen Sik, Muhammad, and Darshanan come when there are needs for uh, special needs for our patients. And um, hmm. Ratna Singh, a Hindu uh, from uh, Sri Lanka, and he speaks Tamil. And once again, if you remember, I said there was a large Tamil population in, in the hospital. Um, help me. Shanti. 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 A Shanti. 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 She's from Sri Lanka, Hindu, and um, speaks Tamil, of course, and she visits our Hindu patients. <coughs> Marlene, interesting lady, she's a retired school teacher, and um, she puts together our memorial service. All the people who have died from the hospital are invited to come, uh, the families are invited to come to a memorial service. She also does a bereavement support. <coughs> this is Mrs. Kati, who is the wife of uh, Ahmad Kati, who is an imam at the Islamic Institute of uh, Toronto. And this is her friend. Both um, Ahmad Kadi, Mrs. Kadi, and her friend, uh, the name escapes me now, they're from Kerala, 
And um, she is from Palestine and can speak uh, Arabic. And there's a number of Arabic uh, Muslims. Some um, interesting group of people here. This man out here, Bartendu. Uh, my good friend Bartendu, who was the one who introduced me to your congregation. Um, Asha. 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 I'm not sure where she's from in India. She goes to the She came from Africa. Oh, uh, she's originally in India. Yeah. Um, this is a Scots, a Roman Catholic Scots lady who visited on the mental health unit. And she's a grandmotherly sort of lady and she has a Scots pro. And she was just perfect there because, you know, when your grandmother says something that you should do, uh, we all know that you need to do what your grandmother tells you. Um, a couple of ladies from the Mormon tradition, um, another couple of ladies from the Roman Catholic tradition, the Garjaman, uh, Edmund and Margaret Durr, they're from Hong Kong, they speak uh, Cantonese, Mandarin, and Hakka. Uh, and um, hmm. Caesar, he's from Goa. And what do you speak in Goa? Goan and uh, Marathi, as well as it's Portuguese. A, yeah. Portuguese. It's Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah. Portuguese. Yeah. Konkani, Portuguese. Right. <coughs> so, sorry? I don't think he's from Goa. I think he's from Goa. Oh, is it? Uh, I think he's from Goa. I think he was born. Anyway. Uh, so it's a nice, as you can see, it's a nice uh, group of people. And this is our organist and her husband. The, we also teach, I taught uh, what's called clinical pastoral education. Clinical pastoral education is, you know, how uh, people will study in the university to become doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, and so on, social workers, and they have clinical placements. Uh, so I supervise uh, students who came from theological school to, uh, they were either clergy or they were studying theology, and they came to do a clinical placement in the hospital. <coughs> Another, and these, these people represent a variety of uh, nations. This chap is from the Caribbean. Um, he is from, I can't remember where, in Canada. What's the, Canada, what's the Canada. province name? Canada. Canada. Uh, oh, Canada. Yes. My, yeah. And uh, he's a he's Roman Catholic priest from Canada? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, she's from a Catholic sister, she's from Sri Lanka, and these people were born in Canada, from Korea, from the Philippines, uh, she's born in Canada, she was born in India, raised in India, and he was born in Canada. Another chap from India, I can't remember what province, see? Uh, interesting, her, her dad was Tamil, her mom was English, and uh, these two are from Hong Kong. He's born in uh, Canada. And these, and they born in Canada, these two, and she was uh, born, in in no, born in Egypt and then went to England. She's Muslim, as you can see. So um, an interesting group of students. And they go out and visit patients and bring all their culture, language, and skills with them. We have uh, festivals, the different festivals of the uh, religions. This person here, you might recognize, Bartendu. He is uh, conducting a puja for Lakshmi. Do a, if. Yeah, that's one. Lakshmi. Uh, and there's Bart. 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 She's part of our team, too. Good to see you. Thank you. And I, these are your students, are they? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Ramayan and uh, teach them Ramayan yeah. and Gita. And these two chaps are from um, uh, Sri Lanka. And Darshis, this is Darshis' wife. Darsh comes from the uh, Guyana. Darshis' wife. This is Akman Kali. He is the Imam at the Islamic Institute of Toronto. This is Yusuf Badat, he is the Imam at the Islamic Foundation. And we 
are enjoying food. I tell my Muslim friends that um, we let them go through the month of Ramadan, the fasting, and we enjoy and join them for the festival of Eid. Uh, so uh, we're always happy to to Diwali and uh, Eid. Then we have uh, Misak. This is Gen Gen Sik. Uh, beautifully, the altar is set up nicely and uh, lots of color. Beautiful banner. She get I don't know where she gets her banners from, but they're really quite beautiful. And then of course. Christmas. And this, once again, is the uh, name <coughs> of people who help us out. And that's it. So, um, that's a quick run through of uh, what we do. How about you? Right on the money. You can see then, this is a good thing. So if uh, you have any questions, uh, I can question to us. So we have that Just um, one of the things, so the poster uh, for Swami, um, it's inside the page, which is protected. I will, um, the other resource that's very helpful is the multi-page calendar. Now, you can't take this away. Don't anybody take this away. You you're look like a trustworthy group of people. <laughs> but um, it um, has all the different uh, festivals um, with a description of what the festivals are. And if you're interested, it cost me $15. If you're interested, uh, there's a place where you can Google and uh, find out how to purchase it. If you, I'll leave it here, and if you want to... Uh, Look at it, you're welcome, and take down the uh, website. <clears throat> if you please allow me, I keep on sitting and I have some problems. Thank you. Um, thank you. First, a beautiful talk, very informative. And I also thank the Dr. Society because I come from Calgary. I'm simply visiting Toronto, so it was oh. a double pleasure for me to be. It's a privilege. Good. Your presence. Uh, I do have a question. I'm interested in uh, one of the points that you have already mentioned, and it was also mentioned in the reading that preceded your speech um, on the dying part of it. Like, as we know, if Canadian citizens are coming from all parts of the world, which you have <coughs> now shared with us brilliantly through your PowerPoint, and thanks to Ajit, to I don't know him. But you can convey my thanks. Brilliant. Uh, and now I have also learned because of your sharing about all the uh, programs that you have for the clinical pastoral education and other students and other volunteers and lay people <coughs> working with the hospitals. Right. My question focuses on the fact that uh, I think you mentioned somewhere that on the dying that you know the bioethics, like my background is in bioethics, oh. and uh, there seems to be a seemingly uh, difference of opinion, I wouldn't say that, but perceptions and perspectives about life as well as dying, as death, are influenced by our different values. Am I right in that? Yeah, yes. And uh, you, you have, uh, you have recognized that, and that's why the brilliant talk here. Uh, I'm just interested to know what sort of specific mechanisms are there to share that with the, uh, you mentioned somewhere, the Canadian law. Like, you know, the, the, the Eastern religion, they do not like the idea of the truth sharing. You, you mentioned that very briefly, but that is one point that I'm very, very interested. And we see in Calgary at least, like I'm also a volunteer with our local Putin's Hospital and do a lot of volunteering there. We see a lot of discussions with families coming from the eastern part of the world, no matter what religion, because of the ethnicity and the background. And the, uh, the focus, we do not have such a big crowd of the clinical pastoral and lay people, but we do have a huge team of bioethicists and the doctors, of course, the physicians.
business and the social workers are there too. But uh, essentially I see that physically we have all these people, logistically you have, met, you have referred to the gong, that's fantastic, like the long gongs and things. But essentially when it comes to the final say or the voice of the patient, which matters so much at a, at a point where, you know, a critical point in life, dying. If Canadian law does not permit no truth sharing, I'm making a double negative here, <laughs> and the culture dictates that, that, you know, if, if you love your uh, family, you do not want to share the, the, at least that dreaded truth, and then again, in the <coughs> uh, reading that we just heard, they said we really do not know when death comes. Really, I mean, although I understand medically, clinically speaking, you can say you have five more minutes to live, and therefore no resuscitative intervention for you. But I see there is a that huge issue of, uh, you know, I think there is a blockage somewhere where we are not crossing it or not wishing to cross that. So I, it would be a privilege if you can comment on that, that what, what is being done, at least even in Scarborough, as I see, to have any specific kind of process through which you are trying to move beyond that blockage. Thank you. Very yes, thank you. Um, you're right, it's, it's a, a terrible stress, of course, for families, for patients and families. Uh, when people are very sick or near death. We, we have at the hospital, um, I, I, you hear me say, we have, it sounds like I'm still there. <laughs> I am no longer there. Um, but your presence and influence are created. We, yeah, we, we, we have an ethicist, um, and interestingly enough, uh, she was born and raised in Africa. She comes from Nigeria, I think it is. And she was trained here as an ethicist. We, we have, uh, of course, our staff are as varied as the uh, people we serve. Um, and our, our doctors understand that. And, and I, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm not a physician, so I don't know the, the legal perspective that a doctor in Canadian society, I believe, there's truth to it. So a patient needs to hear the truth from their physician. Um, but then there's this other question about other societies where maybe the son is told. I, um, I always thought that, for example, the eldest son was the one who was in charge. Ajit tells me, he's from Kerala, he says that in fact the youngest son is the one. So I mean, you know, you think you know something and then somebody tells you something's different. And in fact, the youngest son in, in his tradition um, is the one who um, cares for the parents and I guess would make decisions like that. So, I, you know, we, we come in to offer support as chaplains and as lay spiritual caregivers. The other thing I should say too is you notice we have a variety of helpers uh, like Muhammad who would come in and help and he has helped a lot. Um, for example, there's, there's uh, a variety of interpretations, like any religion, and um, he helps more recent immigrants. I think he's from Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, there's some very, how do we say, traditional views of Islam, and that impacts healthcare and how families interact. We, we would call uh, Muhammad to come and help them understand the Canadian let's say, Canadian way. That doesn't mean that that solves the problem, but here is a fellow Muslim who is knowledgeable about the Quran and the traditions of uh, Islam, um, helping another person who maybe have a more a narrow view, let's say. Um, and so we have that resource too. And then the ethicist would come, and then the physician, um, nurses. It's, it's, that's, you know, diversity. That's, that's where it, it's tense and it's difficult. 
and in the midst of dying, which is already a horrendously difficult situation for families, uh, to have this is, um, is, is just, you know, really, really difficult. I, I can't imagine physicians, patients come into emergency and can't speak English, and the doctor can't speak whatever language they speak, and we can't get an interpreter. How this doctor, you know, makes a diagnosis, and um, because doctors ask us questions about where does it hurt and so on. Somehow they manage, and uh, most of the patients live. Yeah. Uh, we'll say it's the hand of God. That's yeah. right. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, um, I want to thank you for coming. It was a great talk. I'm from Scarborough. Oh, good. And uh, project member of Scarborough, uh, worked in Scarborough, still work in Scarborough. And when you showed the poster, the slide, I thought, oh my goodness, because that poster was in my school. When I was growing up, we had it uh, in grade five, and I was at Affordable, and that was there. I remember reading the poster. I, I work in a school now, a high school, and it's in uh, one of the rooms in the school that poster is up. I just wondered, when was it made, and, and do you, did you know that it was, uh, that schools in Scarborough were using it? It's a fantastic poster. It, it's, it's a wonderful poster, and um, Google Scarborough Missions, there's a whole study around it, and uh, if you can Google the mission, they would tell you where to click on to get to it. I don't know when it was created. It, um, uh, Paul McKenna, it's his baby. He uh, works with the Scarborough Mission, and um, it has been translated in a number of languages, <coughs> um, Italian, Spanish, and Russian, and, and so on. I don't know how many languages, and it's kind of making its way around the world. And it's a kind of, um, um, have you had Paul McKenna come and talk to you? You know Paul McKenna, do you? Yeah. 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 So, he, 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 he has worked in multi-faith for 30 or more years. And he often came and spoke to our CPE students and our lay visitors too, I think, at some point. And he is, he knows, he goes to, do they still have the World Parliament of Religions? Where your small they spoke, do. they still have the World yes. uh, yes. Parliament. Yes. And he talks about going to that uh, Parliament. So, I'm, I'm diverging here, but, uh, I would guess that all the Roman Catholic schools, did you go to a Roman Catholic school? No, it was a public school. Public school. Uh, uh, there are some posters throughout the hospital. We've given them out to people who, and a couple of uh, the mail room, she posted. There's a unit, nursing unit, I think, that has posted this poster too. Um, but um, our, in our secular society, people are very nervous, especially in public institutions, about anything religious. And, um, and I think this is the way to go in our secular society and multi-faith society, is to honor and respect and do the best we can to serve uh, people from all the different religions. Yeah. So. So thank you very much, uh, Reverend Hollis. So I have a small gift to you. It's called Health, Medicine and Religion, ah. written by Swami of our order, who is a doctor. Ah, so thank you very much. Fantastic. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.